Hi, this is for Major Hank, who apparently seems to like my video podcasts. And this is about the Spurs Aston Villa player ratings. My name's Shubham, and this is one of my Spurs video podcasts. Um, one gripe I have is again Harry Fane's favourites. We're 2 0 up, 7 minutes gone. Rafa, who along with Luca is the best player in possession, he's taken off. Fair enough, he got a niggle, but how can Defoe come on? He can't hold the ball up and Shoppers get, in, Shoppers get into games. In that situation, you bring on Sandra, another centre midfielder, pat in the midfield, the same position, hit the counter. He only got on because he's a Harry favourite. He, uh, he, he goes on to say that he thought the whole team performed well, but agreed to know all that. When you tune it up, you have to keep the ball tight, sting out the game, and the last few games we really struggled to do that. We seem to have learnt something about how to do that. I think Villa, defensively, the way they were set up, the Test had up because they had no real attacking ideas. I don't think Zogby came on, so it says a lot, really, for the fact that Villa gave you know, ways to their setup as opposed to anything we massively learned. Um, and this is from Johnny Coop, who thought Rodgers was world class. I thought he was world class. But like Major Hank, I thought he was quiet first half, great second half because he had more space. And yeah, yeah again, you know, Harry is definitely, that's, that's been Harry's favourites and something I think has been brought up. I he thinks Sandro wasn't someone he wanted to bring in, you know, it was more of a Levy thing. And obviously Sandro doesn't do spectacular and I do think Sandro does deserve his place. I think a lot of that is born down to the fact that we don't do that four two three one. For some reason Harry doesn't want to do that. I don't understand well Harry or someone at the Spurs team, you know, just, just thinks it's a bad idea. Harry being the guy who makes the success out of the team, decided we're not doing that. I would like. To, I, I don't. I don't see why that's a bad thing. Four two three one. Man City are playing it pretty well. I think. Oh, well, we can't do that. You know, we've we've obviously. You know, we're on. You know, essentially. You know, we're trying to defend our lead. You know, we're looking at the counter, and I think if you're at home, you're at two 0 lead. You should try these things. You know, especially when you are winning. I think you can try it, but there's a risk. If you try it and it goes wrong, they say, why did you why did you move away from that successful formation? So I can understand why Harry wouldn't do that. Um, so yeah, so that's from Major Hank. Uh, another thing he talks about is that th- this again would be in depth analysis. Spurs going third, another one of my Spurs video podcasts, which you can check out. Regardless of Parker, we've got Sandro, who, who basically he feels is better than it's much better player. Fallon will be missed, but you know, he apparently thinks he'd be brave and play Townsend, and um, you know, because Townsend is very, very direct, and you know, he feels that Townsend should be given a chance. And he thought the biggest loss was would be Luca because, and I, and I agree with that Luca's a ball from our team. He basically, you know, again, it sounds something really good about it. It's like an alchemy. He can turn lead into gold. And I think it is that he's got a combination of mobility, incredible intelligence, and that ability to play that into that right pass. His decision making when on the ball is fantastic. If someone says to me, "What's the difference, difference between Luca and Rafa?" Rafa does Rafa does spectacular. Luca does the solid, but Luca does the solid much more often than Rafa does spectacular. And I think that's the difference. That's why I think Luca is that. This is probably the bulk of my team. I think look, if we lost Rafa, will our team struggle? Yeah, of course it would. If we lost Luca, our team struggle? Yes, of course it would. But who would we miss more? Luca. I think he, his just combination of passing, his ability, his passing range, you know, we would seriously miss that. You know, his energy, his combination of energy and passing. Um, and I don't, you know, and I suppose the nearest we'd have to that, in terms of, I think passing wise, I think he's got a better, much better passing as, as Nico Crancho, but. He hasn't got that energy. I mean, Nico, say we about Luca, Nico. I think as skillful as anything. The way Luca is with all this high and of gravity, he can get that extra yard of space. I've seen him sound between players, but he can somehow get the ball out and get 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 enough yardage just to play a five yard or a fifty yard pass. He's got that ability, and he's got because his, his ball control is so good. Luke Nico's got incredible skill, and I won't de- deny that. But I think going forward. I don't see players like Nico, like the HUD, staying, and even Dawson, because I think now the game is so much about pace and all mobility, having that extra three yards, either physically or mentally. If you haven't got either, or or you know, ideally you like a combination of both, but if you haven't got either, you're gonna really struggle in this in this modern era. So yeah, this is a major Hank.
who um, you know, and again he talks about anybody on me a big miss. Apparently, you know, he thinks that you know, if you give power on games, you'll always score, but he's lazy. Jay will score, but he lacks presence. And I do agree with that. I think up front we are definitely the weakest. I think last season I spoke about um, I thought our weakest in our fullbacks. That's, that's now changed. Ben, Benny has just gone to that level. You know, he's just so solid. Same with Carl Walker, he's become developed. Char- Charlie, who's always solid. If you know, obviously, his Charlie's drawback is his lack of pace. That's it. Yeah, but other than that, I think he's solid. The one thing, the one thing I take issue with is up front, and that's something we'd have to invest in in uh, in January. The likes of your Daniel, um, your um, you know those kind of players, a player that can hold the ball up, someone who can play one up front. I think strike is now. Whether they're six foot three or five foot seven, have to have the ability to play up by them, by themselves. Have to have the ability to link up play. The demands of strikers, it's evolved from two thousand and four, two thousand and five. And again, I'll go with what Hardle said about Owen. He's a great player. He's a great striker, but he's, he's not a great forward. He's always a good finisher. Makes you derided for that. But if you think about it, a striker has to do a lot more now. He has to be able to finish. It's it's you know it's it's not just about getting him getting to the ball. He'll, he'll score. He has to. His runs have to create spaces for other players. You know, his, his runs have to pull players out of position. His runs have to give an outlet. It's just more than that. So yeah. Um, again, as always, check out Spurs Odyssey, Spurs Forum, Top Spurs, who thank you, who were very kind enough, gave me a retweet, and uh, thank you for them for that. And Top Spurs are always great to read. Uh, another great size THFC one eighteen eighty two. And um, definitely have a good read about Windy Colony Spurs. And um, yeah. I'll give a big sh- uh, shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out to my mate Jez Kinsella, who basically helped introduce, reintroduce me to Blockbusters. Steve Marchant, you got to say it. To see it. You know, you got you got just twelve in Steve Marchant Blockbusters on YouTube. Anyway, um, hopefully we'll beat West Brom this Saturday. The preview of that will come on in the next couple of days. Until then, take care and um, please click on the ad links. Help make me a few pennies. Thank you very much, guys.